Heritage Living. Today I'm making shepherd's pie, so I thought I'd go ahead and have my cameraman back there that everybody seems to love. Videotape it while I do that. Hello! Um, shepherd's pie, when people hear that term or hear that name, they conjure... It's not a shepherd baked into a pie. They con What conjures up is like leftovers, you know, because that's what you always hear. Is, Take your leftovers and make a shepherd's pie. Um, I don't... I don't get that from there. <laughs> so I do my shepherd's pie as a meal. Um, seldom do I have any leftovers of what I put into shepherd's pie. All right, so for your shepherd's pie, um, you brown your hamburger. Bring it over here, please. And then if you're familiar with like a hamburger gravy, I make my gravy for my pie with my hamburger the exact same way I do for my sausage and gravy, which you will find a video on, on our YouTube channel. Um, I put butter in after I brown my hamburger. Let that all melt. Um, your hamburger, note on your hamburger, I use a very lean hamburger so I don't have to drain it, but if you have a greasier hamburger I would recommend that you drain you know, a good portion of your grease off. You want this to be flavorful, but what you do not want is it to be you know, greasy where it leaves that ucky feeling in your mouth or your stomach. Um, once your butter has melted in, I simply make a paste with my flour. And if you're if you're prone to want to brown your flour before you do this, because some people say it gives a nice roasted flavor to it, by all means, um, be my guest. I, I don't bother. Um, then I add milk to create the gravy. Add it slowly. Well, you'll find that it thins out too far too quickly and you'll think you'll need more flour and that may not be the case it may be but it may not if you you know just so just add the milk slowly let it get warmed up um, for the shepherd's pie you want a gravy just like sausage and gravy you don't want it pasty the amount of burger that you use is going to be dependent of course on the size of um, pie you want to make so that's all a, a self-preference issue, as well as, you know, the amount of burger you use will be dependent upon, also depend upon the amount of milk you need for the gravy and the amount of flour. So this is about the consistency that we're after. Okay, kind of turn it off for just a minute. This is the point where you're going to add the spices that you want. I like salt, paprika. And because we use cayenne pepper in this, we just add it at the table. So, just like any other time you make mashed potatoes, you simply cube them, wash your potatoes, and boil them. This is a meal that if you prefer the, the convenience of powder potatoes, you can absolutely use those. Whatever works best for your situation and your family. Um, again, we, it's a really gloomy day today. And like the other day, I had to move the um, stew over here to, that I was making and we were videoing to the dry sink. Um, and I had to do that again today. So the potatoes, the gravy's made, the potatoes are boiled. And now we're just going to mash our potatoes um, just like we would any mashed potato. You can use your electric mixer. Or you can use your old-fashioned hand masher. So, everything's cooked, and now it's time to layer our shepherd's pie. Even Schultz agrees. Um, I don't put anything on the pan, meaning I don't put any butter or anything on it. It doesn't seem, ever seem necessary to do that. So the first layer, of course, is going to be our mashed potatoes. It's called the crust. <laughs> the crust, as the cameraman it. If it's a pie, it's got to have a crust. Okay. We'll let you have it your way. I'll be quiet now. <laughs> okay. Then we put on our hamburger gravy. <laughs> Somebody will go after that. Now you can, when you um, make this, you can use, you know, you can use your leftovers and stuff. I just never have enough leftovers. Of this type of thing um, to do and they have they like their shepherd's pie in a very specific way so it's just another meal to make 
Then we, I put green beans on top. And you can use any vegetable you want, and you can use fresh green beans are fabulous. They're absolutely fabulous. Um, I had to use canned green beans this time around. And I will only put green beans, I'll leave a small portion off because Zebulon does not like green beans in any way, shape, or form. It matters not how I prepare them, how I try to camouflage them. He just seems to know that they're there and he does not think they belong there. Haven't we used corn before? We've used corn before, yep. Like I said, you can use any vegetable you want. I lied. What? I'm not staying quiet. <laughs> so make sure you drain your green beans, in case I didn't say that, in case you didn't think about it. And then you, the crowning glory is the cheese. But everything I have got here has gotten cold. So I'm going to put that in the oven for a few minutes to get it warmed back up, and then I'll put the cheese on. The reason I warmed this up first, because my, all my ingredients were cold before I put the cheese on, is all you really wanted to, the cheese to do is melt. Um, you can, you know, brown it on top if you want. The ch particular cheese we have, it's very hard to um, get a good melt on it and browning it kind of just sits there. <laughs> um, so I try to keep most of the stuff warm up and then just put it in the oven long enough to melt it. So supper's done. Everything has mingled and cooked together. And RJ and Josiah are going to duke it out to see who gets to be the taste tester. We'll see if it's age before beauty or if the wiser of the two actually get to do it. Who's always right? Mama is. Okay, I guess Daddy's going to try it. Well, let us know if you try the recipe, how you like it. Um, if you do any changes, put them on the comment section so maybe we can try them ourselves. Thanks for watching and God bless. And where did they see it? In Maul Guyver's kitchen. Bad, there you go.